And what does the word glycemic load mean? What, anybody? Right, it means that and how fast the glucose enters the bloodstream, right? How fast the carbohydrates enter the bloodstream. So the glycemic load is like how many calories enter the bloodstream in the first hour after you ate the food. But if something is more glycemically dangerous, if the calories enter the bloodstream in the first 10 minutes after you ate the food, that would be even more glycemically harmful because it's the rush of calories into the bloodstream that, that causes the spike of hormones. And these hormones that raise like insulin have negative effects on your lifespan. Now, things that are low glycemic, like beans, or squashes, or peas, or lentils, or vegetables, or nuts, their calories enter the bloodstream slowly and gradually over a three hour period, so your body doesn't have to, the pancreas doesn't have to produce much insulin. It can just produce a little touch of insulin, microscopic amounts. It doesn't need to put out huge amounts of insulin. When you eat plant proteins, the proteins have become complete over a three to four hour period very gradually. The amount of pro complete protein entering the bloodstream is only a few calories a minute, keeping IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor one, at a steady low state. It doesn't have to spike up. You see, when you eat an animal protein, in the first 15 minutes, you could have 25 to 50 calories of complete protein entering the bloodstream. When you eat a plant protein, it's not as complete because it doesn't have all the same level of all the amino acids. So what the body does is it absorbs some of the bacteria in the gut to complete the protein. Some of the cells that line the villi are sloughed off. It can absorb some of those to complete the protein. And it can balance the amino acids in store, that it has in storage in the endothelial lining and in the, around the um, interior um, pockets of the villi and in the interior part of the endothelium can store amino acids. The body will gradually absorb them to complete the protein slowly as you absorb those plant proteins. Plant proteins are preferred over animal protein because they enter the bloodstream slowly and they're accompanied by phytochemicals and antioxidants that prevent inflammation as they're being absorbed. But so none of us, you're still always eating some animal products all the time because the bacteria are, li are, animal, are, are living tissue that's being absorbed and you're eating some of your own tissue. You're eating some of yourself when you digest food because you're digesting some cells that are sloughing off the villi. Did you follow that? But the point is, is when you're eating beans and nuts and greens, which are high protein foods, beans have 30% beans have protein as much as meat, as much as burgers. They're high protein foods and because some of the carbohydrate in beans are resistant to enzymatic degradation, they don't get digested, it means the, pro the actual absorbable protein content of beans is more than 30%. Did you follow that? I'm saying that part of the carbohydrate in beans can't be digested. So when, the, when it says on the bag of beans or the box of beans or the can of beans, 175 calories a cup, now you know that you registered 175 calories a cup when it came into your stomach and the signals were sent back to your brain that you ate 175 calories a cup. But three or four hours later, you didn't absorb all those 175 calories. The body can't break them down. A lot of those calories pass through into the toilet bowl. They're not digestible. So you don't get the whole full calories in the beans. Which means that the protein calories were all accessible. It was the carbohydrate calories that got lost in the stool. The bacteria in the gut turn the resistant starch in beans into short-chain fatty acids, predominantly a fatty acid called butyrate. So when you eat beans, you produce more stool fat, you have more fat in your stool. Butyrate has anti-inflammatory effects and anti-diabetic effects, so some of it does get absorbed, but 90% of it doesn't get absorbed because it gets made, because the bacteria turn it into fat so far down in the digestive tract past the point where the body absorbs fats. What's that noise? You guys hear it? Is it me? Did I eat too many beans? 